Today we're going to do pumpkins, which is going to turn into jack-o'-lanterns, I am sure, because it's me. Hi everybody! Welcome to another edition of Draw With Me Kids. I am going to be sidekickless today. <laughs> um, unfortunately, Miss Rainbows is downstairs. She's going to be participating with you guys by watching live and uh, going to follow along that way. But unfortunately, she hurt herself at school today. So she's going to be taking a little bit of break to recover so hello and welcome to draw with me kids so last week you guys we did uh elephants and this one is from emily who is one of our regular artists and uh i loved it if you were if you joined us last week she mentioned she was going to use a bit of a reference to try and do this and i thought it turned out great this is awesome with the tusks and everything so cool. Thanks for that. Ah. Then this little dude I did to, uh, hello. That's not hello from Gatineau. That's hello from downstairs, I think. <laughs> Baby elephant. My little painting elephant. And of course, Miss Rainbows, who did this amazing story about Emmy and Silly and Maya. And Maya's little girl who takes care of Emmy and her baby Silly in this beautiful forest setting for animal, for uh, elephant rescue. So cool. So today we're getting close to, um, oh, hello from Gatineau. <laughs> I also have hello from downstairs too, because I, I got you watching twice, I think. <laughs> so, um... Today we're going to be doing uh, pumpkins because we're getting close to October and today is orange shirt day so it's a little bit of a coincidence uh, that we're doing pumpkins. Uh, no relation whatsoever because orange shirt day is really a special day to uh, remember that every kid counts. It's sort of to uh, remind, remind ourselves about uh, some of the things that happened he uh, here in Canada and other places in, in uh, the states also where a bunch of kids uh, had uh, not so fun school life um, and uh, weren't allowed to go home so that's why we're wearing our orange shirts today to sort of remember that everybody counts and everybody matters and I kind of like that message it's not because we're making pumpkins just by coincidence maybe you guys celebrated that at school if you're going to school today maybe uh, I need a new chair maybe you are uh, celebrating um, on your own through your video school stuff too, or maybe you're celebrating and homeschooling. So today is pumpkin day and pumpkins are so darn cool because you can pick any shape you want to start your pumpkin and make it look like a pumpkin because pumpkins come in all shapes and all sizes. We have our typical Cinderella pumpkin, which would be a very long oval shape that sort of comes up like that, curls in like a heart at the top. And if you think of Cinderella and her magic coach, sort of made of a pumpkin a bit like this. And you would do a second bump just like that. And you would have this little C shape come up like that to give the stem. And then you can erase any overlap. And that's sort of, if you remember Cinderella, that's kind of the shape that you would see, this sort of very distinct, very short pumpkin that turns into that big elegant coach. And what I like to do to make it even more clear that this is a pretty bumpy pumpkin. I put a few little C curb lines in there to show where it is. So that's one type of pumpkin you could do. You could draw a circle. As your shape for your pumpkin. 
and you would draw a little rectangle on top. I like to curve the edges just a little bit in to give it a bit of character and then a little round top on top to give it the stem. I think this guy is going to be from the perspective of looking up so the stem is a little hidden so you wouldn't see these little bumps where it would be hidden like we have for the Cinderella pumpkin over there. Instead it's just uh, from the top up. And again you can add little lines on it if you want to have one of those particularly uh, defined bump pumpkin with the ridges. You can even add some little bumps on it if you want to like that. Depends on how crazy you want to make your pumpkin. So those are the basic shapes of pumpkins. You could even add a pumpkin. We'll take those guys away for a minute. A really crazy shaped pumpkin like a big giant pear almost. So to make an egg shape. And if you want, you can sort of show an extra bump on the back. and make a triangle there to sort of show where this stem is peeking out over top. That's where it would grow, have grown on the vine. I do have a few trivia questions and they're all going to be related to the next part of our drawing jam. Jack-o-lanterns. And if you want to have a pumpkin before we get to those jack-o-lanterns. So there you go, is the three different sizes of jack-o-lanterns, shapes and sizes of ja or pumpkins, I should say. You want to draw a pumpkin that has, put him in the back here, a little bit of its vine still showing because pumpkins grow on vines. I'm not giving anything away on that for our trivia. Pumpkins grow on vines. So if you want to add something fun or different for like a Thanksgiving look, um, before we make them into jack-o-lanterns, or you can sort of have some fun with the jack-o-lantern shapes. Maybe it adds some personality and I'll show you what I mean in a sec you can add kind of a C curve or an S curve, double it up and follow it around and eventually meet it up. So one of the cool things to give it a three dimensional shape is if they the sides touch a little bit every so often and then come apart a little bit until you get to little curly Q just like that. And pumpkins get these little tendrils out that are sort of anchor tendrils that can hold it to the ground or to the wall or to other things to help the vine spread so that it can grow the fruit. Pumpkin leaves, I like to add those sometimes to my pumpkin pictures, are kind of like big, broad, roundy maple leaves. That sounds really weird but I'll show you what I mean. So there's the bottom part. I'm going to go in sort of like that. So how would you make that easier to draw? I'll show you maybe over here. Let's make one right here. I might consider doing one two, three, four, five, and then two little ones on the side to show myself where to go and then around each piece like that. And you can leave those little stems in because that's sort of what the leaf would look like. Put them back over here. So there's a couple of patterns of the leaves that you might have on your pumpkins. And um, the vine shape 
if you're going to make this a vined pumpkin top, you just sort of let it grow right into there. And that is really simply how to do some pumpkins. You could do pumpkin flower, which is like a bell flower. Looks a bit like the leaves. Three bumps like that. And that would be a pumpkin flower. So it hasn't actually turned into the fruit yet. Of course, at this time of year, you probably won't see that as much. You just mean that that pumpkin never became. So how do we turn these lovely gourds, this lovely fruit, I know, weird fruit, but how do we turn these lovely pumpkins into something that might be a little cute and spooky? Well, if you guys were here before and watched us before, then you might remember a couple of our lessons on drawing faces or emotions from our ghosts or from our faces and portraits lessons. So we've got two of them that we can draw on. And what you can do with those lessons, a really brief summary of those, is if you imagine your face is the circle or the shape of the pumpkin, and then you draw a tiny little guide, but where you think the middle of your face is going to be. So I just did that in tiny little dots. And then you decide where you're going to put the eye placements and the expressions. Like that. There's my dot. And where I might put my nose, I'll just do a little tiny dot if you want a nose on your pumpkin. And you start drawing your big shapes. And if you're just joining us right now, yeah, I don't have a partner today. Miss Rainbows is downstairs and watching from the couch with her leg up, resting. Poor kiddo. And she's actually drawing along with us too, so you'll get to see what she's created downstairs um, without being here. So I'm going to make this guy a little bit goofy. I'm going to use... two big arches like that and then I'm going to arch them up a bit because it looks kind of like he's laughing and then I might make him have a big nose I'm thinking a big nose right here hi down there this is a little voice from the void it's not the void, it's just downstairs. <laughs> that almost looks like he's got a big mouth going, ooh, ooh. That's not what I'm going for. And then I'm going to make him a big, happy, goofy. Kind of looks like he could be, you know, Bert from Sesame Street. That nose and his head shape. So I've just used a bunch of, like, the big arching smile. I've done sort of the same shape of his body for his nose and these arching eyes. And then made this sort of super duper happy laughing pumpkin. You could add teeth onto him by doing either uh, square or rectangle shapes. And what I would recommend is to make it look like you've carved it out of the pumpkin. Just erase the line where his smile is so it looks like it's all one big cut. And that would be how I do this goofy face. And what I like to do to maybe give him a little bit more personality, maybe he has, um, there we go, I'll turn that off. Maybe what I will do is add some curly hair on him. So I'll have, make it look like he's got some curly hair using the vines. So that's sort of like knowing all of the parts of a pumpkin, you can add those to your jack-o'-lantern too to sort of give them that extra different look. You can use the things from what makes a pumpkin a pumpkin to help a jack-o'-lantern have some personality and character. This guy is just, uh, he's a fun fella. 
He's just a little wacky. And maybe I'm going to give him eyeballs too. I'm going to give him some pupils you can see just by drawing X little thing. Now one of the cool things, if you know, if you've ever seen a pumpkin or a carved pumpkin, a jack-o'-lantern, you can sort of see a 3D piece of them. You can sort of see on the inside, right? Because they're all hollowed out. And one of the things you can do to make that happen on your drawing of a pumpkin or of a jack-o'-lantern is to create tiny little echo lines to give that 3D image. What the most important thing to do for my older artists especially is to remember what direction you're looking at the pumpkin. So if I started like this, it would look very weird if I put it over there unless somehow I'm right up close to the pumpkin and seeing in to the other side. You probably more likely see Actually, now that I've said that on this guy, it might work that way because he is wide. But you might more likely see pieces on this side because you're sort of looking at them from this angle. So always try to remember wherever you're making your three-dimensional sides, make sure it makes sense to where you're looking. And remember that wraps around because it's... Uh, it's a round object, like a ball. So I made this guy cute. Maybe I'll make this guy or gal a little pretty. And then I'll make... Actually, maybe this guy will be scary and this guy will be pretty. So again, I'm going to think about where is the middle of this pumpkin. Maybe this guy is looking this way. And there's the middle of the face, so I'm going to do triangle eyes, because guys, how often have you seen a pumpkin that has been cut with triangles? Because they're the easiest cut to do on a pumpkin. Trying to do circles on pumpkin is, pumpkins are hard. Trust me, I know. <laughs> I like trying to do circles <laughs> on pumpkins. And sometimes I'm good at it, and sometimes I'm not. I'm just going to make this one a whole uh, triangle theme. Why not? Maybe this one is um, a cat pumpkin. Okay, so one thing I would totally recommend when you're carving your pumpkin and when you're drawing your pumpkin or your jack-o'-lantern is to avoid going right to the edge because that just doesn't work very well on your pumpkin, does it? We'll try that. And again, i got to remember, I'm looking from this way, so I can sort of see into this guy's pumpkin face that way. You might see the, just catch the edges there. And if you want to use your, um, you're making quick and detailed pictures. Miss Rainbow says she's making quick and detailed pictures. So if you wanted to do this, you could maybe have a vine sticking out to be the kitty cat tail. And maybe you have uh, something like the leaf as its ears. And then you can transform this pumpkin into an actual kitty pumpkin. Just like that. Using sort of the similar shapes of the leaves. And uh, the shapes of the vines. I can't see to wait to see what you're doing. Hey, so I don't have my usual quiz master with me. So I'm going to do the quick quiz of today's lesson. Or today's jam session. <laughs> My first question is related to pumpkins. Well, not pumpkins, jack-o'-lanterns, sorry. In the legend of jack-o'-lanterns, um, our uh, main fellow, Jack, is forced to wander the world with 
a lantern made out of what? Let's force wander around the world made with a lantern made out of what? A pumpkin, B turnip, or C potato. I'm giving this guy some more spooky features while well, I see if anybody's in there I'm making aha uh -huh, we have a guess of the turnip anybody else have a guess You are absolutely correct, Em. It is a turnip. That pumpkins actually, the tale of the jack-o'-lantern originated in Ireland. And they didn't have pumpkins in Ireland way back when this tale first came to be. And uh, they had turnips. He had to carve out a turnip to carry a little piece of coal around for the rest of eternity because he tricked he tricked the devil so the story went a couple of times and was not the nicest guy in the world so he wasn't allowed to go to heaven or hell according to the legend and the legend says that uh, we make jack-o'-lanterns to confuse jack so that he doesn't come making trouble at your house anymore Actually, I might just put some more into this guy's mouth. There we go. And one of the cool things about making your own jack-o'-lanterns or pumpkins and drawings is if you want to do something uh, that has personality or character, you can start with a particular shape um, first and make your pumpkin out of that shape and then that helps you know bring out some either scarier features or goofier features or uh, pretty much anything you want to portray of that character you can create it with a shape kind of like how we talked about um, doing a triangular shape for a superhero and a certain if you have the triangle a certain way or something that was much more um, streamline or form fitting if you turn it the other way like a wizard or a dress or something like that so if you go back and use some of your favorite shapes that can sort of help you give some personality and some uh difference for the characters kind of like i i thought this would be a really cute silly cat <laughs> and i rather like it i might even boop where the uh, whiskers might be. Draw little holes. It's a pumpkin cat. I'm actually in the middle of drawing, painting I should say, a pumpkin dragon. All right, so I guess we got the first trivia question out of the way. What country are the earliest pumpkin seeds or were the er earliest pumpkin seeds ever found is it a france b mexico or c venezuela where were the earliest pumpkin known pumpkin seeds ever found I'm 
And again, thank you very much to National Geographic Kids for all the cool information about pumpkins and some of the history story of lessons or lessons of history. Blah, 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 some of the lessons of jack o' lanterns. See Venezuela. Mm, Venezuela. It's a good guess. Anybody else have any guesses? I'm going to draw some more vines here while people are guessing. Some vines of this guy is sort of creepy. I'm going to come and get you vines. Excellent. So how I'm getting that, um, that would be cool. A little light coming out of the whisker holes. Maybe that's what our, our jackal engine is going to look like, Miss Rainbows. We have France. These are very good because I did mention uh, the Cinderella pumpkin, which is from France. The answer actually is Mexico. And were discovered, first pumpkin seeds were discovered in one of the uh, uh, Aztec, Aztec temples. And they suspect it was in uh, sort of a, a uh, offering to the gods was uh, some pumpkin seeds. Which is kind of cool. I love pumpkin seeds. I love roasting them up and putting a little bit of salt on them. So tasty. Halloween is one of my favorite times of the year. So part of what we're going to do for the rest of uh, October, well except for next week. Next week we are definitely going to do something that is Thanksgiving themed since we have Thanksgiving coming up. But for every week for the rest of October, besides next week, we're going to do something spooky and Halloween-y. Kind of like these guys. <laughs> these guys aren't super spooky. These are guys are kind of cute. This guy might be a little spooky. Let's put some color on him in the next minute or two. See how much I can get done. Sadly, I don't have any more trivia questions. <laughs> Does anybody grow their own pumpkins? That would be kind of cool. I think I have a friend of mine that grows their own uh, pumpkins. I love that pumpkins can come, are mostly orange, if, uh, um, but can also come in the ghost pumpkins, so they sort of have, don't have the coloring, like a regular pumpkin. You can get them yellowish, you can get them slightly green, And while I think I'm probably the only one in my house that likes it, I love to carve pumpkins and feel how squishy they are. I know, weird. I just like squishy pumpkin. I like carving the squishy pumpkin. Poor pumpkin. So a really good way to indicate there's light on there is just to sort of make the insides a little bit brighter. You could use yellow, you could use orange. In fact, maybe I will switch to yellow for this guy. And then uh, on the interior, I'll go back to that orange just to get that side of that pumpkin. It's brighter than the outside of the pumpkin but it's still not as bright as directly where the light's coming. Oh my gosh, now that I've got his nose yellow, he really does remind me of Bert. <laughs> Maybe this little cat pumpkin is kind of a... a little bit of green on him and maybe he's a little bit more this orange a 
we'll put that green back on in just a second. I wasn't I had been indecisive. I didn't decide in time. I thought maybe I was gonna do a ghost color pumpkin on this guy, but I won't. I won't, I'll just do this like so. So next week we are going to do turkeys, cartoon turkeys. And not the ones that are, well, I guess we could make it look like there's a turkey on the table too. But I thought it'd be much more fun to actually draw their big tail feathers and that kind of stuff. And again, anytime you're doing a character, like a cartoon version of anything, like your uh, pumpkins here, Think about what kind of uh, personality they might have and think about the shapes that you associate with those, that personality and that can really help bring a character uh, to life. That can really help convey in one quick visual um, what kind of personality that character has. Are they, are they mean? Are they scary? Are they goofy? Are they... Uh, do they look a little bit tall and different? And people mistake them for being something that they're not? These are all questions I ask whenever I do um, a character drawing. I try to think of ways that I can really quickly use my basic shapes to make a character. Like right now, I am drawing, um, well, not this very instant, <laughs> but at work, I'm drawing a new book. And it's going to be out in time for Christmas. And it's called, uh, it's uh, Charlie the Chipmunk and Christmas Light. And it's this tiny little baby chipmunk with his mom. And, um, kind of want to do a little fellow that's maybe a little smaller than most chipmunks. So I think about making him a little smaller and I give him a little tuft of hair for his personality. And it's these sort of like little things that as you think and you draw, they sort of start to become part of your signature or part of your style. Like if you think of, uh, well, maybe you guys might not think of Tim Burton and Nightmare Before Christmas and that kind of stuff. They, he's got a very big eyes, but big round hollow eyes that sort of almost look like they could be from a skeleton kind of look to them. Always this haunted, gaunt expression. That's kind of his signature style. I don't know what my signature style is. It's a good question, though. There. So I've got these guys that are all glowing. Um, and I'll make this guy. The ghost pumpkin. And there we go. I am just about ready to call this one done. And I hope you guys had fun and have some interesting characters, jack-o'-lanterns, of your own. So I think it would be really cool. I'm doing green for this guy because I find when you cut into a ghost pumpkin they're often green, greener on the inside. 
So I can't wait to see what you guys have come up with and uh, share your pumpkin drawings. Your pumpkin or your jack-o'-lantern. You could have gone all the way. You could have just said, yep, I'm going to do a jack-o'-lantern too. I mean, really? Why wouldn't she, right? Oh, then maybe again. You just liked a pumpkin and you're trying to do a Thanksgiving card for for somebody. And that's okay too. That's how you can take something and make it for Thanksgiving, but you can also keep going and kind of add that Halloween-y element if you want. So, I'm going to just go to my camera. Oh my gosh, it's going to be big me. Boom. So, Miss Rainbows, I'm sure, would say goodbye uh, to you too uh, from downstairs. And after Yep, she just, she just shouted it up. <laughs> so I hope you had a good time uh, drawing some pumpkins and using your shapes to make different character personalities for your pumpkins and turning them into jack-o'-lanterns. So next week we're going to try and do some turkeys and uh, then we will be on to the spooktacular Halloween stuff. So again... Give us a little bit of a like there. Help support the uh, stream. Draw with me kids if you have fun. And send in your pictures using the messenger option. We'll see you guys next week. And stay safe and have fun. Bye.